This is Selma Schimmel at the 33rd San Antonio Breast Cancer Symposium. This annual meeting takes place and our opportunity to meet with some of the key opinion leaders and the movers and shakers in breast cancer research. And you're one of them, Dr. Joan Mortimer, Director of the Women's Cancer Program at the City of Hope Comprehensive Cancer Center in Duarte, California. Nice to see you. Good to see you, Selma. So we're going to speak with you about two things, endocrine therapy, and then we're going to talk about some imaging after that. But let's okay. talk about the news in endocrine therapy, and maybe you can give a quick endocrine therapy 101. What does that mean in the face of breast cancer? Yeah. So most breast cancer actually is fed by estrogen. And even if you're after menopause or your ovaries aren't producing estrogen, you still make estrogen from fat cells, from the adrenal glands, and cancers, grubby little things that they are, make their own estrogen if, if, you, if they don't have adequate estrogen. So after the removal of the breast tumor and, and radiation therapy, a major component of treatment is to mop up microscopic cancer cells is to use hormonal therapy, endocrine therapy that basically prevents estrogen from feeding the cancer cells. So for years we used tamoxifen um, as our hormone therapy. And in recent years, we've moved to a whole new class of drug called the aromatase inhibitors. There are three aromatase inhibitors, letrozole or Femara, exemestane or aromacin, and, uh, and anastrozole or arimidex. And it turns out that this meeting that we found that anastrozole or arimidex was probably equivalent to exemestane or aromacin. Um, that was one of the findings. A very interesting finding from that particular study was actually related to uh, women's weight. So increasingly we come to realize that obese women seem to have different uh, benefit from, and from hormonal therapy for breast cancer and that women who are considered obese actually benefit less from these agents compared to women who are either slightly overweight or of normal weight. So that was an interesting um, finding at this meeting. Let's clarify again the mechanism of action of these two types of drugs where one will block the production of estrogen, but they're a little bit different, yes. tamoxifen versus an aromatase inhibitor. Could you explain that, please? Yeah, so tamoxifen basically blocks the estrogen receptor, and that's a little simplistic, but, but that's its major mechanism, where the aromatase inhibitors prevent estrogen from being made so the cancer can't make estrogen, and as a result, there's no estrogen around to feed the cancer, and it shrivels up and dies. The effects of these drugs on the normal body is very different. So if you are taking an aromatase inhibitor and can't make estrogen from fat cells or the, the adrenal glands, then what happens from a side effect standpoint is that there are a lot more side effects that are related to low estrogen. Tamoxifen that, that blocks the hormone receptor, estrogen receptor, actually itself has many effects that are very similar to estrogen on the normal body. And so tamoxifen can increase your bone density, not decrease your bone density. Um, in this particular meeting, one of the things that was shown was that women who are taking tamoxifen seem to have less heart problems than women who are taking the aromatase inhibitors where you have less estrogen in your body and there seems to be a higher risk of heart disease. The downside of estrogen because it, and of tamoxifen because it has estrogen effects is that there are more um, gynecologic problems, more vaginal bleeding and the risk of endometrial cancer, uterine cancer that doesn't happen with the aromatase inhibitors. So. But the aromatase inhibitors are for women that are postmenopausal. Correct, yes. They, we use them in women after menopause, yes. Now, there was some information that was, has been discussed at this meeting uh, recently, understanding some of the increased uh, cardiovascular risks for women on aromatase inhibitors. What are we learning now that they've been used for some time? Yeah, so, so can you always worry about long-term complications of treatment, especially since it's, it's key to note that most women who are diagnosed with an early stage breast cancer, breast cancer confined to the breast and the lymph nodes, 
don't die of breast cancer. And so we really do need to pay attention to the long-term effects on the normal body. And so what we did learn from a comparison of tamoxifen to exemestane, aromacin, was that women who took um, exemestane, aromacin, seemed to have more cardiac problems than did women who were taking tamoxifen. Although women on tamoxifen still have risks when it comes to blood clotting yes. issues. Yes, it's, it really is, unfortunately, it's a problem. If, if, if all things are equal from a cancer standpoint, we really do often sort of pick your poisons by what the long-term side effects are. So where are we today right now at the standard of care when it comes to looking at endocrine therapy and choices women, really, that, that they make with their doctors when it comes to therapy? But, you know, when you talk about side effects, obviously that's a, a scary thing for women. And then, of course, you have the issues of compliance when you're trusting that people are taking their oral therapies. Yes, it's, it's pretty obvious that these drugs aren't of benefit if you don't take them. And, you know, one of the big problems that women experience when they're on tamoxifen is hot flashes and night sweats. So when the aromatase inhibitors first came out, I think we felt very good that these drugs had fewer side effects. I'm not sure that we believe that now because it turns out there are very unusual side effects that are associated with the aromatase inhibitors. For example, somewhere between one-third and one-half of women experience these joint achings um, where you wake up in the morning and your hands hurt and it's hard to get moving. And, and often that's a reason to not take the drug because people are uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. the, the problem with not taking it when you have these joint problems is that it turns out that the women who have the joint problems and who experience hot flashes seem to be the women who derive the most benefit from these hormones. And so we need to figure out how these problems develop so we can help women to be more comfortable so that they can adhere to taking the medications because if you stop it because of a side effect, you're usually the person who's going to get the most benefit from the drug. Yeah, and a whole other note on the compliance adherence issue was the one about the uh, co-payment increase chance of early discontinuation, which is of concern because obviously Tamoxifen is less expensive than the aromatase inhibitor class, correct? That is, cor that is correct, although because Arimidex, anastrozole is now off patent, it turns out it's, it's not very expensive anymore. But, but what this study showed is the more people had to pay as a copay, the less likely they were to be adherent to their medications. And so that's, that's disturbing. One final question, a study presented here about exemestane. Exemestane, yes. Uh, Maybe another first-line adjuvant therapy for hormone receptor positive early stage breast cancer. How significant is this? Yes. So, so I mentioned that there are three aromatase inhibitors, and, and letrozole, Femara, and anastrozole have both uh, been used as treatment for early stage breast cancer and they are superior to tamoxifen in postmenopausal women. So the third aromatase inhibitor, exemestane, was... And what's, what's the common uh, the uh, trade name for that? Uh, aromacin, sorry. So, uh, so when arimidex and astrozole was compared to aromacin, exemestane, turned out that they were equivalent. So now all three of these aromatase inhibitors have been shown to be beneficial in postmenopausal women as, as adjuvant treatment. And in the early stage setting, is this very significant or? I think it's, the, the significance of it is that uh, there may be different side effects with the three aromatase inhibitors. I think some people would argue based on a very large study that letrozole femara has superiority over the other two aromatase inhibitors. But sometimes when women experience side effects, whether it's the joint aching um, or muscle aching, sometimes when you switch to another of the two aromatase inhibitors, those problems are less. And ultimately, we want women to be able to take these medications and live normal lives at the same time. So the fact that they're all three equivalent allows us to switch them if that needed.